Okay, so we have to check boundary points, but sometimes boundaries don't look quite like a fixed boundary. Sometimes we have to worry about what happens at infinity. What do I mean by that? Well, it's a little complicated to explain. Let's do so in the context of another uh, toy problem. Simple example, you got a box, it has a volume of 48 cubic feet, and you want to minimize a certain cost. All right, let's say the dimensions of this box are given by variables x, y, and z. And the constraints are that their product has to be 48, and these dimensions have to be non-negative. What we want to do is to minimize the cost, assuming that the front and back cost $1 per square foot, the top and bottom cost $2 per square foot, and the left and right hand sides cost $3 per square foot. That gives us a function f of x, y, and z equal to 4xy plus 2xz plus 6y z. We need to minimize that function. Now I've, I've matched up x, y, and z with uh, this, this front, back, top, bottom, left, right in a way that's hopefully not too confusing. To solve this, we're going to use the constraint to solve for z as a function of x and y. z is 48 divided by x times y. Substituting that back into f gives us a function 4xy plus 96 divided by y plus 288 divided by x. That's a function of two variables, x and y. This is going to be a nice optimization problem. Let's compute the first derivative. That is the partial with respect to x, which is 4y minus 288 divided by x squared. And then the partial with respect to y, 4x minus 96 divided by y squared. We have to set both of these equal to zero. That gives us two equations, two unknowns. 4y equals 288 divided by x squared. 4x equals 96 divided by y squared. If you substitute in one equation into the other, solve, you get x equals 6, y equals 2. Maybe, maybe take a moment, check that, and then let's classify that critical point by computing the second derivative. The entries of that 2 by 2 matrix are 576 divided by x cubed, 4, 4, and 192 divided by y cubed. When we substitute in x equals 6 and y equals 2, then the second derivative at that critical point is 8 thirds, 4, 4, and 24. This has positive determinant, positive trace, this is a minimum, and substituting in those values for x and y gives us the minimal cost equal to $144. I feel pretty good about this solution, but, but we do have to check the boundaries. So let's see what this looks like. In the xy plane, the set of feasible values are really the first quadrant. I can have all non-negative values of both x and y. Now, at the obvious boundaries, where x is going to 0 or y is going to 0, the function clearly blows up and goes to infinity. You can see that. you got x and y in denominators. But this is not all there is to the boundary. You also have to worry about what happens when x and y are both getting arbitrarily large, where they're going to infinity. Now, how do you deal with that? Well, in general, you have to take limits. It can get a little involved. Maybe it's helpful to think about a really large ball and what happens along those boundary points as the radius of that ball gets bigger and bigger. You can see I can see that for very large values of x and y, the function is going to infinity. And because we have this single local minimum in the interior, and the function blows up as you go out to the boundary or out to infinity, then this is definitely the global minimum, and we have nothing to worry about. I merely bring up this example as one of those cases where you have variables going off to infinity, you do need to pay attention to what happens in that case.